All right, so let's talk about symbols in this next very basic Adobe Animate tutorial. Uh, by the way, I'm using uh, CC 2008. Can you believe that? It's, uh, it's from the future, basically. All right, so uh, symbols. Uh, right now, obviously, you're seeing uh, some stuff that I've already created, and this is actually a symbol. It's a movie clip, and uh, it is containing, I'm going to double click inside of here, it's containing other symbols uh, within here, and you'll notice that when I do that, I jump down to uh, this poorly named uh, symbol, and I've probably got some symbols inside of here too. Let's see, is there another one? Yep, there's another one inside of there. And you'll notice that each one of these can have uh, their own timeline as well with, with their own layers. Uh, so there's, um, you know, it's, it's kind of this uh, little world within a world, and then you can kind of step back out of that by uh, just kind of clicking over here. Now, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's do this. Let me take this guy off of this file so we're not too distracted here, and I'm just going to paste him on in. I'm going to uh, break him apart, uh, so basically I'm going to undo symbolizing this thing, okay? And let's get rid of the eyes, okay? So eyes are gone, right? Uh, and you'll notice that when I do that, uh, it's not like I kind of chewed away at uh, any part of this face, okay? So you can see, see we've still got it just a plain, nice, uh, fully filled in face over here, okay? And uh, that's one of the main reasons that you're gonna uh, work with symbols is so that there are these independent units uh, that you can get rid of, you can swap them out, uh, and most importantly, you can uh, animate them and change them over time uh, without, uh, you know, affecting unrelated elements, okay? Uh, but let's uh, let's keep stepping backward here, and we'll, we'll make some new eyes from scratch. So I'm going to go over here and grab the, uh, the circle or the oval tool, and I don't need a stroke around this. I don't need a... A separate uh, line surrounding it. What I'm going to do is just start with a with just a, a black circle. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and you'll notice that if I try to draw this on the same layer that I've got everything else, it's uh, the fill artwork is always just going to go behind it. Okay, so priority wise, anything that is a, a, a movie clip is, is going to show up above these things. Uh, so or your just basic raw vector art. So um, for me to kind of properly draw on top of this guy, I've, I've basically got to get, create a new layer over here, and you can see I've already got one. But uh, if I wanted to make another one, there you go, new layer, new layer. So you can keep doing that. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, so let's just be sure we are on top of this. And there we go. I've got this kind of strange dead eye now. <laughs> um, so I've, uh, I've got this selected, and, and one way you can instantly tell that this is back down to your raw vector art uh, is that you, you get this kind of uh, you know check tiny little checker selection pattern uh, when you when you select it and also too uh, there's not a bounding box around it you'll notice when I uh, select any of these other items over here you've got this bounding box um, you know kind of indicating hey you know what I'm a symbol and of course you can look over here and see what type of symbol it is movie clip or graphic don't worry about button that uh, harkens back to an earlier day of uh, flash and how it used to be used. So uh, let's do this. Let's uh, try to make a nice little shape on top of here. So I'm gonna copy it, all right? Now, of course, you can use your copy hotkey, which everybody should know. Uh, but uh, here's a little something that you might not know. Let's make another a new layer over here, and we're gonna go paste in place, okay? So now let's put this, that, my copy right back on top of the other one. I'm just gonna change the color of it. Uh, and then what I can do is I can hit the Q key, which is uh, gonna be a hot key for the free transform tool. So just hit Q, start to learn that one if you can. And then I'm just gonna shrink that down a little bit, okay? Uh, another way I could do that, uh, which I actually kind of prefer at times, is to uh, go over here to uh, transform and then uh, select scale and rotate. And uh, actually I'd probably never do this if I didn't have a hot key for it, uh, which I believe by default you guys do not have one. So uh, I would set uh, set up a hotkey for this. Uh, I prefer uh, Command R just because a lot of times I use this for rotating as well. But uh, so you know, I'll just type in here, uh, scale down to ninety percent, and then I might do it again, you know, ninety seven until I get it just kind of just perfect over there. Uh, and you'll notice too that um, you know this is basically centered just perfectly around the, the you know the shape below it, right? Uh, to give us a nice little tapered effect, I would probably move it around a little bit, you know, just depending on where I wanted the the line uh, width to be a little bit stronger, so maybe that's below the eye. You know, when I do that, then I realize, oh, maybe I should make it a little bit bigger too, right? Something like that. So I've uh, now I've got that um, nice little base for the eye again. And uh, this is on two layers right now. Uh, if I wanted, I could select uh, the, the artwork based on the layer. So I could go over here and select just that. I could select just this. Or I could kind of pull down while I'm selecting and get both of them. And here is where I'd make this into a symbol. So I'm going to hit F8. I uh, get to know that. But uh, for, for symbol creation, 
Uh, or you can go over here to convert to symbol. <clears throat> and I've actually got hotkeys for both F8 and F9 because a lot of times I'll, I'll clumsily, you know, just my fat fingers will hit one or the other. Uh, so I just decided, hey, you know what? I'm going to make a hotkey for both <laughs> F9 and F8 are going to do the same thing. Uh, but So you can go over here or you can also uh, right click and you'll see it's getting cut off on the screen capture here. But uh, below, somewhere below here, it's convert to symbol. So there's a lot of ways to go ahead and do it. And uh, again, I was real sloppy about just what I just did here. <laughs> Let me undo it. I'll do it one more time. So F8 and, uh, and, and it, it gave it a, just a default name, a symbol one. I could call this I. Uh, and then I could also choose the type of movie clip, uh, which we'll have to get into in a later time. But um, I'm going to just go with movie clip for right now. And you can see the registration point. This is the pivot point uh, is, is dead center. You can adjust this. But um, in this particular case, I think uh, just having the pivot point be in the middle is a good idea. Uh, you can adjust that, though, after you've created the symbol. So if I hit uh, the Q key to get over here to the free transform tool, you can see when I rotate this, it's going to go, it's basically rotating around the center of it, right? Now, if I took this little pivot point, moved it over here, you'll see it's going to rotate it around there. So that's that's what that registration point does or pivot point. I've, I, coming from an animation background, I consider it more of a pivot point. Okay, what did I just do there? I, uh, I just duplicated this, so I just uh, copied and pasted it. Uh, what I did, though, is I used a hotkey for paste in place, which put it right back on top of the other one. So I would say get to know the paste in place hotkey, went over here and hit Q, and I'm going to just start you know, manipulating this a little bit. I can skew it a little bit with that free transform tool. I can even uh, rotate it some. Uh, but uh, now what I have to deal with is the fact that, uh, I, you know, I want this nose to be over top of this eye. And that's not going to work with these being on two separate layers right, like that, right? Let me make it a little bit better. So what I've got to do at this point is grab both of these things, cut them off of there. Usually what I'll do is I'll just select anything that is on top of the on the layer that I want to move to, okay? And you can see that uh, when I did that, so I started over here on this layer. When I selected over here, keep your eyes over here, you can see it just bumps me down that to that layer. And then I'm just going to use paste in place again, okay? So instead of pasting normally, where it just puts it in the center usually, uh, again, I'm going to use paste in place, puts it right back where it was. Now all I've got to do is uh, deal with uh, moving the... Uh, one of these symbols above the other one. You can go over here to arrange. This is obviously going to be the slowest way possible. You can go do it. You can go to bring to front. Uh, I would just get to know your hotkeys for dealing with these. And actually, this is kind of an an odd case where basically this is uh, this is not really going to ever work well being on top of the on the eye because it's just this one little line right here. What I should really do is put in some of this fill color in here. So for example, what I could do is um, a couple ways. A couple ways I could do this. Let me go back out and uh, just sample this color. So just hold down, sample it, right? And, okay, here's one kind of fun way you could do this. You could um, basically snap this shape into another one. So I'm going to go over here, snap to objects. And holding, uh, yeah, I've got the normal selection tool over there. So I could kind of just snap that over to there. You'll see that snaps in. That, oh, that already was snapped in. There we go. And then I can just kind of arc that up into there. So that's one way of doing that, right? Uh, and now, when I move this guy back over here and I arrange it above, you can see, you know, just depending on where it's at, it, it should work out well. Uh, if I wanted to kind of you know, move that over there, that would work too. Give it a little bit of extra space. So, uh, yeah, he's still got the problem that he doesn't have pupils, huh? Uh, well, you know what? Let's get used to using our... Uh, our break apart tool. So if you, let's say you, have, you got a shape that you like, something like this, right? Uh, let's break it apart. Okay. And that makes it down, back down to the kind of raw vector art again. Uh, I could go ahead and just, you know, kind of with it selected, go to any swatch, you know, now it's going to fill uh, everything in black. Uh, in this version of it, I had some nice little kind of a Disney-esque, uh, uh, you know, little kind of pie slice taken out of this. That's really easy to do. Uh, let's let's look at uh, another way of doing this. I'm just deleting part of it out. Uh, I could go grab the line tool. Let me uh, make it a different color. And I'm just going to draw within the shape. In fact, let me make that stroke a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to draw within the this, this shape. And if I make an area that uh, basically separates 
uh, the, the one fill from another, I can select it like that. Okay, so if this line wasn't closed, let's say it was just over here, right? It's still gonna select that whole thing. But because I basically connected you know, these two lines, now I can get rid of that. I can just double click on the line. That'll select all connected lines to it. And then I can just scale this down to the size that I want. Again, I'm on the same layer. So you know, at this point, what should I do? Make it into a symbol and bring that over there. And it looks like he's uh, taking some LSD or something like that. I was have old Mr. Burns in that, uh, <laughs> in that one Simpsons episode. Okay, so uh, perfect use for our scale and rotate. Let's knock those down to about 60%, maybe this one about 70%. And it still doesn't exactly look like <laughs> the one I started with, um, but there we go. So we're now moving these things around. And uh, again, separate units. Uh, we can go back and find these in the library at any any time we want. Uh, so you can see, uh, well, I just called this one symbol one. It looks like I've already got, oh yeah, that's right. Uh, there's the one I, I called I, the one I named appropriately. So this I should probably call, you know, pupil, All right? And, uh, and I can drag stuff out of here too, right? So if I need to go back and get any of these things, uh, I can do that. Uh, now here's kind of the, something that'll throw some people off in uh, using the program for the first time. If I were to double click inside of here, right? Get down to editing the vector artwork again. Let's say I wanted to, I don't know, give him a red eye or make this one a red eye. Hey, what happened? Look, it, uh, it made everything else red, including obviously the kind of master symbol here in the library. And uh, that should really kind of be your takeaway from this. this these, these are your, your templates for all versions of, uh, or all instances of that symbol, okay? So you change, uh, you know, the, the master vampire in here, it's gonna mess with all these other ones. But that is actually a good thing, okay? Uh, you just gotta get used to, to to realizing that that's going to happen, uh, but you can really use it to your advantage. Like for example, you know, I'm working for a company. I've animated all these eyes across a thousand frames, right? And the boss comes in and he goes, "You know what? I think the, the I think the color should be a little bit different." Okay, so instead of having to go and retool every frame that that uh, symbol appeared on, you just go and you change, you know, the one in the library and changes everything else. Okay, um, although <laughs> that, that's a funny example because you can actually do a find and replace in the program for colors. So you can find, and uh, this too would would change things. Well, I guess I didn't perfectly sample that. Um, there we go, replace all now. No, it's, no, it's a little tricky, but uh, did it do it there? Uh, who knows? Um, <laughs> most of the time that works. Anyway, that's not what this lesson is about. So let's go switch this back to being uh, white again. And uh, if you wanted to make a unique instance of this, what you're going to do is uh, go over here to symbol and then duplicate symbol. Okay, so this is not co like copying and pasting. This is actually creating a new symbol in the library. So we would call this I2. And the one that I did that on, I could now go and adjust independently from everything else that's already on here. That is the, you know, so these are, if you go over here to properties, see, it says I select this one i2 right uh, and look at this you can even go and um, go back and you can change the uh, the symbol type too if you if you wanted to what's in the advanced thing uh, who cares so anyway um, and actually well let's since we're still on this topic let's go and uh, and look at uh, what's in the symbol uh, section again, you've got duplicate and you got swap symbol. And this too is great for animators. And there's another new way of doing this in uh, 20, the 2018 version as well. But uh, uh, this works just as well. You can go over here to uh, swap symbol and just select the eye out. And again, for animation purposes, uh, this this is terrific, you know. So here, let's get let's do a little bit of a better example. Let's take a line, we'll put it across here, okay. And actually, let me get back to the I2 again. All right, so. Come across here like that. We'll give it a little bit of an arc to it. Again, that eye, that line cut the uh, the shape in half, so I can now select things independently. Uh, let me sample this color. We'll come over here. All right. So now, if I was animating, right? So I'm going to go hit uh, F6, make a new keyframe on this second frame over here. Uh, I could go and I could swap out that symbol. I use the hot key for that. And uh, now you can see, you know, how you can kind of really quickly move through things and uh, and uh, and animate 
you know, this eye would look a lot better. Let's duplicate this symbol, pupil, half, all right? Get rid of that half, and then just put that over there. Now, doesn't that look funny, right? Um, <laughs> That's about how I feel today. So anyway, let's try to think if there's anything else I should mention in the last uh, minute or so of this. I think as far as symbol basics go, uh, and I did actually pause the video and think about this, I think that's enough for right now. It's, it's probably a lot to take in. And uh, again, if you're using the program for the first time, you might even want to rewatch this while you're actually just kind of working uh, to, uh, to, to soak it all up. But uh, We'll talk in another video about the difference between movie clips and uh, graphic clips. And a lot of that has to do with kind of your usage for what you're doing uh, in terms of if you're going to export it for animation and whatnot. But anyway, uh, I think I think I've checked off most of my boxes this video. So don't forget to uh, go to CartoonSmart.com or get the Cartoon Smart TV app for iOS devices and TVOS devices if you don't already have it.